We understood that there was enemy soft or red cell presence in the area, which is basically just guys who are gonna provide harassing attacks on us. So at any time we have to be prepared in a defensive posture to fire back on these guys. Off in the distance, somewhere out in the jungle, we hear like people howling and hooting and trying to make themselves sound like crazy howler monkeys or something like that. You two watch that left side, all right? I watch that road. Hey, good Jimmy, help you jump. And that's when we heard the first pop shot. We take contact at the North ECP. Team leaders and squad leaders took charge. I started screaming at all the guys, get on your gear, put on, go to the ECPs, provide security. The Marines were quick enough out of the tents. Alright, going dark. The people that were on the ECP took contact, they returned fires and then the people that just attacked us ran away. And so we took a squad of Marines out and then we pushed around the corner and then we, we couldn't find any of them. They were just gone. Upgraded security, they took off. No, nothing to report since then. All right, if anything changes, let me know. I have to report, I have to sit up at 06 in the morning. They were hearing stuff in the bush and trying to so we don't need the whole squad. We went about a quarter, half mile down the road and so there's this really bright glowing light on the left side of the road and it turns out it was a speaker. So uh, we grabbed it kind of as an intelligence piece and then we took it back and we put it on an MRE box and then uh, Corporal Can Jemmy built a sign and on, on this sign it was a piece of cardboard and he took a permanent marker and wrote, come and take it. They wanted to come attack us and take their speaker back. They had to come get it. So basically what this is, is it's going to blind the enemy at night. All right. And also, it would, if it was nighttime, it would light up this area like the sun was lighting up this area. We're gonna remove the safety, which is that square one I was talking about. So I'm just gonna pull it out. All right, now we're live. I'm okay. Corporal Martin, so first name Jacob. I'm with 9th ESB. I'm uh, with 2nd Platoon Bravo Company, first squad leader. I'm from a small town in uh, Christiansburg, Virginia. It's like five minutes west of uh, Virginia Tech. When I was growing up, I played football uh, from probably age seven and up. And that pin holds the spoon in place, okay? Corporal Martin, he's, he's one of the best Marines that we have in the platoon, hands down. I don't think anybody can argue that. Uh, just from a leadership style to knowledge and MOS proficiency and just to, you know, having, having that professional demeanor about him. So now with that long pin, I'm gonna go through. All in all, he's a, he's a He's a really good person and an even better Marine. So I had a really tight brotherhood growing up and a small group of friends. And as soon as I graduated high school, I really missed out on that brotherhood. And it was something I felt was essential to me to like keep functioning as an adult. So I really just wanted to get out there with a group of brothers again. And I heard the Marine Corps was a place to do that. You guys see why I was being so careful with the safety now? Yeah. Yeah. It was gonna go off. Uh, we're heading over to the bridge site, so that way we can start building it. Yesterday they prefabbed everything, so that way it should be ready for us. What we're doing is we're building a one rope bridge to make it easy for personnel to get across. We were building the bridge out in JWTC to help uh, the, the staff out there actually. Uh, that whole process of just getting to the site in of itself is the first challenge. The environment that we were building this bridge in was, it's a super inclement area, so it, it's, it's sloped on both sides. In this particular section, we have close to a 50 foot gap uh, of water that we had to shuttle all the lumber across. Right. Uh, it doesn't hurt. Because Getting so down deep. there in, its, in itself was a challenge. 
Not yet, I'm just trying to square it out right now. You just swing the rope? Yeah. What's going on, Avo? What's going on, guys? Yeah, I do need help. You know, the Marines and CBs in this particular case got to got together and started working on this construction of this bridge. I'm um, working alongside the CBs. They're they're pretty much the main effort on building the bridge. Uh, uh, B3 Thomas Scott. Uh, I'm a builder with NMCB4. I uh, specialize in carpentry, concrete, and vertical construction for the uh, Naval Expeditionary Force. So it was just kind of a more complicated process than we were used to. Getting all of our material down the terrain took us a little bit. It's just definitely the hardest place any of us have ever done construction in our time in the Navy. Camera, that's great. As we were coming down the path uh, to take the wood down to the bridge site, uh, one of the CBs had tripped. Hey, Chief, hey your job is, there anything else is to grab this and, and then I'll just dab it on there, okay? Uh, once the, uh, yeah, have so you field stitched someone before? Not no. field, only in the clinic, bro. And, uh, Doc jumped into action. He uh, stitched his hand up right then, and uh, it was pretty impressive seeing Doc working okay. with him. Yeah. All the way across? He's already wet. Yeah, yeah brother. Right now. Oh, no. With all the stuff that we need, can't wait to send a picture of all of that. First one didn't hurt you. We built this bridge for the uh, Jungle Warfare Training Center staff. Uh, we also built this to prove to the NCF that in a contingency operation, we have the capabilities to come in here and throw a bridge up in a uh, jungle terrain within about 48 hours. Once we got the material on site, we set up the rough frame for the bridge. A lot of the bridge prints we had for things that we were used to doing as a CB unit didn't really apply to this environment. So B3 CSAC actually drew these prints up himself and uh, we went started from square one with this bridge. Uh, I have a nut. Uh, so this is pretty much holding the two pieces of the bridge together. And at that point we twisted the bridge across the suspension over the river. Uh, it's a pretty easy process, but it just was a little bit more complicated in the environment we were in today. The CBs that we work with, they're actually they're in some insane group of guys. Uh, we got out there, uh, it was four day op, and we got it done in about a day and a half. Uh, so for example, if this was a highly trafficked patrol zone for a group of Marines, this would be easier to traffic, uh, move material, supplies, equipment, weapons. To be able to uh, get troops from point A to point B as fast as they humanly can. So being able to put a bridge up like this definitely uh, speeds up the timeline for a lot of tactical maneuvers. I'd just like to kind of spotlight the group of guys that were out here working on this thing. Um, I think if you would have brought any other 10 CBs here, this probably wouldn't have gotten accomplished. Uh, we got a bunch of all-stars, a bunch of savages out here, so uh, definitely a good group of guys, and if this needed to happen, it would definitely happen. A rear security push up a little bit towards us. Set. We're doing a recon patrol. We're going to get the slopes and the curves of each road roading up to our uh, platoon defense site, about three miles that way. And we're going to.
determine whether they are an obstacle for our vehicles or not. There's an equation we do to find the radius of the curve. Uh, if the radius is too tight, then it'll it'll be an obstacle. For vehicles, just turn it on the road, just uh, instability and whatnot. All right, so my name's uh, Sergeant Brian Jenkins. I'm a uh, Sergeant, 2nd Platoon, 2nd Squad Leader. Uh, Temecula, California. It's just like maybe 30 minutes east of Camp Pendleton. My dad was in the, in the military. He was a Marine, and then he moved over to the Army. Uh, we, we did move a lot. So, uh, I was born in Utah, and then I grew up most of my life until I was like 13 in uh, Washington State. And uh, that's, he, he did a lot of recruiting. Uh, when we were in Washington, so I didn't really see him too much. And I, I knew that was going to be a part of it uh, when I joined. So uh, just the separation from the family, being stationed in Okinawa, I, I, I'm definitely feeling it now. But uh, it, it's just uh, something that we have to live with as being in the military, something that, that we do. I was 19 years old, yeah, so a year after high school. I was working at State Farm Insurance. I was sitting behind a computer desk, and I, I'm not one to work behind a computer desk, so I was just sitting there, and I just felt like I was rotting away, and I just really had to get out. In 2015-16, that was kind of the, the rise where ISIS was doing more attacks, specifically in my area. Like in San Bernardino, there was a shooting. A new report just out today has disturbing new details about the San Bernardino terror attack that left 14 people dead and 24 wounded. We've got shots fired out the back window. That kind of aggravated me and uh, pushed me to make my decision and do something about it. Drop the Two two has arrived at LZ fifteen. We are currently conducting reconnaissance test on it. So you came up with this idea? Nice. Is it better? So the things that they teach you at prison, huh? I think. Should I do that side? Yeah, don't yeah. that side too. You have to. You went to prison? No, he didn't really go. That's Rambo. Oh. This is what they teach you when, when you're undesignated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Those are true life skills. Poster right here. Poster. True life skills. Woo hoo hoo! Let's go! Yeah. <laughs> no, I wouldn't be uh, anywhere else because I believe that, you know, every place I go to, it's an experience, whether it's good or bad. You know, I learn from it. So, I mean, eventually I'm going to get out of this military, so I might as well have different experiences from good ones and bad ones. So I think this here, I think it's a, it's a pretty good experience for me. So, uh, you know, I don't know what the future has ahead for me, but, you know, we'll, we'll find out. Uh -oh. You know, you can stay at home and you can work at a restaurant, work behind a desk, and there's nothing wrong with that. But when you come out here, and you can volunteer to teach Japanese kids English, or you can go to Thailand and you can build a school and help people. There's, there's nothing better than that. And you've got your brothers and your sisters. This, is, this isn't just another job, this is a family. This is, this is so much more than just a job. As Marines, you know, you, you can be sent to any, any fight, any climb, any place kind of ordeal. And it's, it's crucial to understand the different environments you could be working in, because it can be any environment, any place in the world, it doesn't matter. We're not just fighting in the deserts, we're fighting in jungle environments, we're fighting in urban environments. So understanding how to traverse these environments, how to get around these environments, how to work in these environments is very important. And it's something that as Marines you should understand because you could go there in a moment's notice. So we got some intel that the people who attacked us that night were in and or around the vicinity of Snipe Mountain. We got our orders that we're gonna occupy Snipe Mountain. It's basically just like any other town that you're used to seeing. And it's, you can tell that every position set in a way to where if somebody in a different building needed to see you, they can. We got a current Frago saying that there was gonna be some enemies up there and it was our job to go and infiltrate and clear the town. 
and uh, that ultimately was our was our point of attack.